Hello and welcome back to We Are Tottenham TV yet again for some more unpopular opinions. I am joined by um, I am joined again by Brian Daigle from Tottenham on Tour. How are we doing, Brian? We are doing great. Ready for round four of this round four. Round and four. You it, and and you, your birthday yesterday. It was indeed. And, uh, and yeah, I just wanted to say to everyone, thank you very, very much indeed for the birthday, love. Really, really appreciated. I tried to reply to every single one of them. And thank you for also subscribing to Tottenham on Tour. We picked up 80 subscribers, but let's get some more Tottenham on Tour. But thank you, thank you for the birthday, love. All right, and now let's get into some more unpopular opinions. And this one comes from Shahi9. He says... Lo Celso could do a good job if he has the right mindset and Conte wants to keep him. He'd be a, he'd be a great as a number 10 and would help us break teams down. Would you like Lo Celso to potentially stay uh, no. give, uh, as, as a player, the, given who, who he is? Uh, the only reason I say this is he, he just really hasn't done it in his time at Spurs. Um, he's, he's had a falling out with Conte. And the only time when he's playing very, very well is when he's playing for Argentina. Mm. And when he's playing for Argentina, he plays in a certain human son's position. And that's not going to happen. Um, I just think now, the, the, as well, what I think, I think, I think Lo Celso could be a very big piece of a player plus cash deal. And we know this is how Paratici likes to, how to work. So I think with his outgoing, could bring in a huge incoming. So uh, I'm, an, I'm a no for this one. Do you think he could do a job, though, if he stayed uh, in, in Conte's system? You know, it's him staying fit. He's, he has the, the curse at Tottenham, doesn't he? He mm. just can't stay fit. Um, That's the thing. I, I like him. I've always been a big believer of Lo Celso. I actually like him as a player. I think he's done great for Argentina, great for Villarreal um, when he's been um, playing for them. So I do think he has a good player in there. Um, obviously, I would rather sell him at this point if Conte doesn't fancy him, but I do think he could potentially do a job if he was to end up staying. The only thing I will say is documentary season, all or nothing, when Kane and Son was injured, he was fantastic. Mm. He was like the runs he used to make from midfield yeah. to attack, bringing the ball forward was fantastic. He just didn't have the players that could do the job to finish it because obviously Son and Kane being out. That in itself, so I really, really enjoyed. And when he came on against Manchester City when we beat them 2-0 and he yeah. scored within, that's the GO I like. Goal. Yeah, that's, the, that's, that's what the, the GO I like. I've just... Not been happy with him like this season and the tail end of last. So, so yeah, haven't seen it enough. No, that's exactly that's exactly the words I needed. Uh, next up, we've got um, Sergio Sh uh, uh, Shawshot. He says the grief Harry Winks gets is totally over the top. I don't know, given that he's a Tottenham Academy product, he's a Tottenham boy. He's been at Spurs for twenty years. Um, you know, he 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 put into good performances when he first came in. Um, do you think he gets too much flack? Or, or do you think, you know, given how he's performed over the last couple of years, it's warranted? This is very hard for me to gauge because, like, like you said, I think when he first came in and Poch gave him his debut against West Ham and he was fantastic, until he picked up that horrific injury at Burnley that season, he was, he was a great player. And I just think that injury, maybe it's his body or the, the injury where he's lost a bit of his turn of speed or his agility when turning... It's heavily affected his game. And, and we've seen in recent games, and the one I'll give you a pro example is the 3-1 the against Leicester, where he could have got to the ball quicker. He just seems to have mm. lost that. And when you make these kind of errors, when we're 3-0 we're, we're up and then it's a, an error for a clean sheet, his errors seem to be highlighted. And if you look at the stats that people brought up last year, that when he's on the pitch, this happens, or even when he's come on the bench, off the bench, and then this has happened... It's just shown that he is a weak link. When, when it gets personal, when it gets towards his family or anything like that, apart from the football, then yes, it's gone way too far. But I think with the football aspect of it, people pay good money to, to go watch football and it's part of a, a football uh, fan's prerogative. They pay the money, they have the right to about the football, not anything other. And the outside of the grief he's getting away from football, yes, yeah, totally uncalled for. But for his football, I think it's I think it's warranted. Mm. Yeah, I, I sometimes feel bad for him because I feel like he's the butt of every joke. <laughs> but his performances have really been very poor, and it's, uh, especially that one in the FA Cup. You remember against Everton? That was one of the worst things yeah. I've ever seen. Um, so, I mean, obviously, I don't like. I don't think anyone should be abused, but um, I do think. 
people criticising his performances definitely warranted over the last yep. couple of years. And that is from a club, someone who's uh, been a fan of Winks. Um, Hugo Axelson says, Dejan Kulisevsky has got the potential to become Tottenham's best right winger in the Premier League era. All right, so let's look at this. Anderton, so Lennon. Anderton. Anderton, I was obsessed with it. Anderson, I was obsessed Bale with. in his last season was a bit more of a right winger, wasn't he? He was, he was. It's it's a bold statement, but do you know what? This kid's 21. And he's already and doing bits. Doing more than bits. And you look at it, um, he, he, in my opinion, and this could be another um, uh, opinion within the unpopular opinion, I think in Premier League history, he could be one of the best January buys for what his impact has been in this... I don't mean overall, I mean from January till the end of that season... I think he could go down as one of the best premiership buys. Um, so, yeah, I think he's he's got all the attributes. He has settled to the Premier League like a duck to water. I reckon he could. Mm. Yeah. Um, the way he started, there's no reason why not. He's been absolutely brilliant. So if he continues like this, he could well be. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be hard to sustain, but if he does it... Then Just confirm that was Premier runner. League era, wasn't yeah, it? Premier, yeah, Premier League era, yeah, for sure. Um Next one is Mikel, who says, getting second place in the Premier League next season without a trophy would be a failure of a season. Would you consider oh. as a runners-up place next season without a trophy a failure? Would you take that right now? If I said, look, next season, we're going to finish second, but we're not going to win a trophy. Would you take that right now? No. You wouldn't take it? No. You wouldn't think it's a good season? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. It's not going to say it's a good season. I think... With the domestic trophies and obviously a European trophy, whether it be Champions League or we drop down to Europa League, I would take a punt on Conte getting a trophy in the cabinet. So, listen, if we got second, that would be great. It means we've, we've bridged that gap with Man City and Liverpool, let's say, and that would be fantastic. another year of Champions League football. But I would take a punt on trying to get a trophy. Well, if you t- what have I told you? We lose the league by a point. And we lose the Champions League final next season. <sighs> Would you take that next season? Right now, after that to you. Right two now? Yeah. Two losing, well, losing the league by a point and losing Champions League final. But we go, we go all the way there. Oh, you've done another one where I need that <laughs> fit. Oh, mate. First, losing the league by a point yeah. and losing the Champions League final. Would you say it's a failure of a season? I wouldn't say it's a failure of the season by one point. And we've seen yeah. the last... Liverpool and Man City have been the point here and there. So I don't think you can call that... Uh, we lost to Chelsea by, what, a few, a good few points. Leicester yeah. ended up being 10 points. We finished third. So to lose it by a point and get to a Champions League final, I don't think that would be a, uh, a failure of a season. But second, just second outright? No, I don't think I'll take that right now. What about you? It'd be hard to say no to that. As much as I want a trophy second would represent big progress and that would definitely set up a title challenge for the following season we know that because I, I don't think it's realistic to expect a title challenge next season much no. as we could hope maybe we could bridge the gap that's like all that's all just hope and and not nothing concrete there yet that we could bridge that gap if we were to finish second next season then that's genuine um that's genuine uh clarity that's genuine um evidence that we could go on to challenge for the title. What? Why would? I probably would uh, accept second place. One caveat yeah. I put into that is obviously at the end of next season, as we speak right now, and as we're recording, Conte hasn't signed a contract. We yeah. don't know if he's extending. I think he would. If we months. finish second, I think he would. Well, sorry. this is the thing. This is a, you. You think he would, but maybe he he wouldn't. And then obviously, if he lost to Conte, then you start from scratch again. I don't know if second is is. Because obviously, then you got. If no- we're if we're actually in a title challenge and we finish second, I think Conte would see that as actually a club going in the right direction. He'll be like, next season, like we can actually go. go yeah, that's what I- we did. Inter well, first season, he finished second, and second season, he went and won it. So maybe we could maybe similar could ask uh, Hamlet Spurs. We'll see. So I don't think second would be a failure by any stretch of the imagination. Um, Quandale Dingle says, if Bergwijn played for Leeds Palace or Newcastle, he'd be as good as Rafinha, Zaha or, say, Maximan. Bergwijn is good enough for Tottenham. Players that carry weak teams are not that good. Look at Grealish, for example. Uh, and and qu- uh, he goes on to say he would rather use Rafinha money for some other position. Um, I think Grealish is a great player. Yep. I don't know what he means. Look at Grealish, for example. I, think he's, I know he hasn't had the most amazing season. Sometimes when these big money deals, it can take a season to just get your find your feet and then then you'll be flying. It has happened so many times. 
um, where people expect big things. It takes a year and then they're flying. So um, I wouldn't just take Grealish's season as an example of, oh, look, uh, clearly um, if you're shining in a smaller team, that means you're no good just because of what Grealish done. And I don't think he's even been that bad this season anyway. So I don't know. I don't think he would be as good as Rafinha. Um or Zaha, but he, I, he, he probably he might be able to do what Sir Maximum does in Newcastle. I don't think he'd be able to carry Rafi, um, Palace and Leeds like Rafinha and Zaha do. So first of all, Grealish needs to go out the window of this equation immediately. Yeah. I, I actually think Jack Grealish is going to have a phenomenal season next season. I see what this guy's saying. I think Bergvine in a team like that could do a lot. But it, 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 it's a big ask to say the players that he's saying that have cons- consist consistently done it so uh, I, I see what he's trying to say but I just slightly disagree but with the, the Grealish completely disagree yeah uh, I have to say that so yeah I made my, my, my points clear um, Axel THFC says Kulusevski is the best January signing in Premier League history uh, doubt, uh, doubted from the start but delivered right away major factor on why Spurs got top four was the final piece for our front three uh, plus historical debut and he had m- more assists in his first 15 games than any player in Premier League history can you, uh, can you think of a player who's had a side impact from January as big as Kulisewski has for Tottenham so you know, when, when I in think terms about of this also, not just him as a player but also consequences for their team so, so a player, and this is going back, and I, I remember this because I loved this striker. It's, uh, Henrik Larsson did a very similar thing at Celtic, uh, Manchester United. Yeah, he didn't get the goals about it, but what he did for that team at that time was very, very good. I think Suarez came in a January window, didn't he? Mm. Um, and obviously we know what he went to do, but we're talking about, like I said just earlier, the, the, the first part of that season. And I don't think I can think of someone. I honestly don't think I can think of someone that came in at January and immediately hit the ground running to the levels that Kulisevsky has. And also drove their team to a you know, top, top four, four yeah. I just like after that. I'm trying to think, did Kness anywhere has any January signing ever won a league or for a team or anything? I know there's some that have like kept teams up. Yeah. There's definitely some who've done that. I'm trying to think of a player who's come in from a top team and, and really dragged them to uh, to achieve their goal like Kulusevski has. So you it's mentioned that rare. when you say you're keeping players up, Kevin Campbell did it at Everton, didn't he? He came in from mm. Turkey or wherever, and he Christoph just off degree. I remember Birmingham. Yeah, for both. So yeah, maybe that's maybe when you look at it, maybe we need to look further down that end rather than the top end. I'm just trying to think: has anyone ever a January? Have we yet, any January signing that has ever? Oh, do you know another one? Into a top four. Finish? Denver Bar did it in Newcastle, and so did what was the other uh, striker they Denver had? Denver Bar was he in January? Yeah, he was in, in no, Papi Cisse. Papi, but yeah, he was the one. Papi Cisse, that's the one. So he was amazing, but he, he didn't. But they didn't get top four. They, they no, fell short. No, they just fell short. But he had an impact. He did. He did. He but had an impact. That scored did. some goals. Suarez was signed in January, yep. but he didn't quite kind of. Hit. Yeah, he. I think the next season wasn't it that he started yeah. coming into. So it's, I can't think of a player who's like Kulusevski like that, who's literally come in, got five goals, eight assists, and dragged his team to a top four finish I'm trying to think of team players who have won the league maybe yeah I, I think Simeon you're, you're, you're mainly looking for players who have had that kind of impact I think you're more likely to find players that have dragged teams away from relegation mm. than that have taken teams to Europe or, or, or top of the league let me know in the comment section below if you can think of any better or more impactful I should say January signings in Dejan Kulisevsky uh, in terms of literally coming in um, performing how he does and actually getting the, uh, helping the team achieve a goal which didn't seem attainable let me know in the comment section below but look that's all we have for this episode of Unpopular Opinions thank you again for everyone for joining us as Brian Dagger as well thank you for joining me for another Pleasure. episode of Unpopular Opinions like, subscribe and comment and as always come, come on you Spurs, Spurs.